So go on, give us your best Mario impression. It's a me, a Mario. Good, right? Worked on, <laughs> yeah. on that all Perfect. day. Worked on that all day. Charles Martinet has been the voice of Mario, Nintendo's ever-present mascot, since 1995, and many fans can't imagine anyone else playing the role. However, the only reason Martinet even plays Mario is because of his own quick thinking during an audition to play the character. So I'm guessing he was a fan of all the original Mario games? Uh, no, he wasn't. He had no idea who the fuck Mario was. He just heard through the grapevine that they were holding an audition for a children's character and thought, fuck it, why not? I'll get a go. Fair enough. Yeah. That's, that's the best way to catch it. Like, he had no idea like, who Mario was. I don't even think he knew what Nintendo was, because he says, I don't really play many games, because he was an old-ass man at the time. He just went, I just heard they would like this goofy children's character and thought, I, yeah, I can do that voice. Let's go. Something I should point out is that even though Martinet was aware that someone somewhere was holding an audition to find the voice of a character called Mario for a children's game, he wasn't actually invited to it. Wait, so he just walked in? Yeah, he crashed the audition to be the voice of Mario and went in not knowing who the fuck Mario was. I'd never seen Mario. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know what, uh, you know, what I was going in for. That's some balls on that guy. Isn't that? That's a lot of balls on a guy who most people never go, it's a me, a Mario. It's like, that's, maybe that's why his voice is so high pitched. These balls are so ginormous, they dangle down and pull on themselves. Their own gravity caused them to squeeze themselves, giving him that high pitched voice. So he crashed the audition. It's actually a little bit worse than that, because when he turned up, um, they were actually packing all the equipment away. And the people conducting the audition said, oh no, we're done, we're done, we're not doing it anymore. And Martinette went, no, I want, to, I want to read for this part. But in mind, he had no fucking clue who Mario was. And the like, people conducting the audition were like, um, no, like, really, we're done. We're packing away right now, you should have come earlier. He just sat there like, no, I'm going to do it. I, I love me, Mario. It's like, so I'm assuming, seeing as he's got the part, they did actually give him a chance to read the lines. Yeah, the people conducting the audition like, were a bit annoyed at this point. They basically said, okay, fine. And they gave him a single line of direction, saying you're an Italian plumber from Brooklyn, and then told him, as soon as you open your mouth, that's it. We'll start recording. As soon as you shut it again, we're going to turn it off, and that's the end of your audition. Okay? And Martinette went, okay, I'll accept those terms. Martinette would later recall an interview after hearing this line of direction, he was tempted to give Mario a stereotypical Brooklyn accent, not dissimilar from the one you'd hear in the Mario cartoons. Don't worry, Princess. Luigi and me will climb that mountain before you can say spaghetti and meatballs. However, just before he opened his mouth and spoke with a stereotypical Brooklyn accent, Martinette had a realisation. So what was this realisation? Well, Martinette thought to himself, wait, this is a character aimed at children, and children aren't exactly going to want to listen to a gruff Brooklyn plumber talk for hours at a time. Something I should point out is this, like, this audition wasn't for one of the games. It was for a, uh, a tech demo, I believe, that Nintendo were doing, where, do you know the Mario 64 face? Yeah. Where he talks. Hello! I believe they were going to have that on a screen, and children come up and interact with it. And obviously they need someone to stand behind the counter and talk to the children back. Yeah, to be honest, I can see where he's coming from. Yeah, if you think about any character aimed at children, they tend to have this like intangible quality to their voice that makes them sound more approachable. Which you can't really, like, as much as I love the Brooklyn accent, because like, we're all fans of Bugs Bunny, um, you can't really say like a gruff, blue-collar, working man's voice would be suitable for his character who like, small children are supposed to try and interact with. <laughs> so can you imagine that? Like, so the idea like children walking up and talking to us, like, oh, hi, Mario, it's really nice to hear your voice. Thanks, kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously not the voice he was going for, but like, a deep voice does sound like quite intimidating to a small child, which is like why a lot of children's characters tend to have a really high-pitched voice, which is what Martinet was thinking. Out of curiosity, since it's tangentially related, um, what's your favourite voice of like a fictional character? I quite like the way that they do Goofy's voice. Any particular reason? Is it just like, yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> Oh man, you do realise that if you mention Goofy, Brad, you know what we've got to talk about. Oh no, It's don't. a Goofy no, movie! No. <laughs> yeah! You know what we've got to talk about now? Fucking Powerline! Powerline's the shit, man. Put a clip of Powerline in. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what my favourite is? Who? It's the voice of Lex Luthor in Justice League Unlimited because I later found out that's Clancy Brown, who people may recognise as Mr. Fucking Krabs. Oh yeah? 
And the reason I love it so much is not only is that character awesome, there's a great joke in one episode where he's getting chased by a Mazo, where he goes, oh, don't worry, I've always got a plan. Because Lex Luthor's super smart. He goes, I'm going to hide somewhere where no one can find me. And do you know where his secret base is? Where? Under a barber shop. I mean, you'd never look for him Someone there, would the you? Someone actually says that to him. A barber shop? Gotta hand it to you, Luthor. Nobody would think to look for you here. That's one of my favourite things about like the age we live in now. Because like, you can just go on IMDB and look up people's profiles and just go, Oh wow, this guy voices this and this. So when I looked at um, D. Bradley Baker, who does the voice of Klaus in American Dad, do you know what he's also the voice of? <laughs> the fear on cards in Gears of War. <laughs> So the Cathedral Guard's are like, PUNISH! That's fucking Klaus from fucking American Dad. Well, I'm late for my pedicure. <laughs> the fucking German goldfish. And I love doing shit like that. Like, voice acting has so much more range than an actor. It's like, oh wow, watch Tom Cruise playing in this movie, a big dicked hero, six foot tall. Okay. What's Dee Bradley Baker doing in this? Oh, he's Grave Mind from like Halo 3. I love it when you see voice actors who the voice that comes out of them is really not their voice. It's like um, the one for that is, it's not a voice actor, but it's the girl who plays um, Rosa on Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh God! Have yeah. You heard her talk. Like, if people don't put a clip in of Rosa and then a clip of her, like in real life, her voice sounds made up. Oh, don't be angry. I'm not angry. I think it's funny. <laughs> you know you look like girl, you look like that girl that plays Rosa in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I'm like, I am that girl. People are like, nah, you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I love all that shit. It's like, uh, the one that always gets me, and this is the best one, is the voice of the girl from Lilo and Stitch is right. Samara from The Ring. Lilo from Lilo City is the same little girl who's Samara from the fucking ring. So like when you say it's like, I love doing that, because obviously it's acting, that's what you do, but with voice acting you can do so much more. Moving back to Mario and Martinet, after coming to the realisation that maybe a gruff Brooklyn blue collar accent wouldn't be suitable for children, Martinet went in the exact opposite direction and opened his mouth and said the now iconic line, It's a me, a Mario. It's a me, Mario. Woohoo! So that one line get him the job? No, it did not. Because remember, I said earlier that the people conducting the audition said, as soon as you open your mouth, we'll hit record. And as soon as you stop talking, that's your audition over. Martinet, realizing this, decided, okay, I'm just not gonna shut up. And he <laughs> talked in that voice for half an hour straight. Okie dokie, let's make a pizza pie together. You go get some sausage, I'm going to get some spaghetti. We're going to put the spaghetti and the sausage in the sweet pizza. Bear in mind they were packing up the interview when he arrived, so he made them all half an hour late for lunch or some shit, but he just said, I talked for half an hour straight in that voice, saying anything that came into my head. And eventually, someone came over, okay, okay, Charles, 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 Charles. Really, really good, but we're out of tape. <laughs> and I like it that they stuck to their word and they yeah. said, well we said, you can, as soon as you stop talking, we'll stop recording. And they actually talked for so long, they ran out of the ability to record. So that's come over and they said to him like, okay, Charles, thank you very much, um, we'll call you. Here's the really funny part though, even though Martinet talked for half an hour straight and was only stopped when the people conducting the audition ran out of fucking tape, he actually initially believed he'd blown the entire audition. Thank you, we'll be in touch. And I thought at the time of that, well, okay, we'll be in touch means goodbye. We'll never call you. So he didn't think he got the job? No, he thought he completely fluffed the audition, even though the people conducting it had sat there for half an hour after they were already supposed to go home listening to him talk. And obviously he admitted that they recorded half an hour of fucking footage of him talking. I mean, to be honest, if I forced my way into an audition, kept them for half an hour, and then was told that they ran out of tape. I wouldn't pride for him. And then went for the exact opposite of the voice they told you to do. Bear in mind, his only line of direction was, you are a plumber from Brooklyn. His interpretation of that was, it's a me, a Mario. <laughs> it's like, what plumber have you heard talks like that? <laughs> Can you imagine, like, oh man, my sink's blocked up. And you call up the guy and the guy's like, it's a me, a Mario. Oh, come around and fix it that way. And it's like, are you real? <laughs> So, obviously, he got the job. Yes, he did. He got a call a short while later saying Nintendo loved your take the best. So, yeah, you're Mario now. 
Wouldn't it be funny, though, if the only reason he ended up getting it is because they recorded over everyone else's audition? <laughs> because he talked for half an hour and they went, oh, shit, it's the only take we've got. Send it in, send it in. So let this be a lesson to anyone watching at home. If you really, really want a job, just go crash an interview, refuse to leave, do the exact opposite of what they tell you to, and get thrown out. If it worked for Mario, it can work for you. So earlier in this video we had a tangent about who we think would be the worst person to replace the voice of Martinet as Mario. It's probably going to be cool because it went on for a bit long. But I really like the idea of like, you know, characters with voices that are so iconic you can't replace them. So there's anyone like from any like realm of fiction that you think has a voice that's so good they couldn't get someone else in to replace them. Well I cut this out of another video actually where I talked about Tony J. Who's who's that? The, he voices the Elder God in Soul Reaver, but he, he passed away after the game, and I mm. remember thinking if they ever made another one, you can't replace his voice because it is just that distinctive. Yeah, I, uh, one that springs to mind for me is uh, Aku from Samurai Jack, where it's voiced by a um, Japanese voice artist like uh, Meiko, I believe his name was. It's one of the things they said, we really don't want to make a new Samurai Jack because we can't, like, you know, replace Meiko. And they've got fucking one of the Baldwin brothers in it. <laughs> the one that annoyed me, David Hater. Oh, Snake, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's getting this fucking... replacing with Keith Sutherland. Yeah. Fuck and he... off. <laughs> He's David terrible. Hater. He's David terrible. Hater. <laughs> it even makes sense. Why have you been a hater on David Hater, man? <laughs> he wrote the first X-Men movie, man. <laughs> Do you know what the one for me is? This is probably a bit out there, but it's the voice of Tommy Oliver in Power Rangers. But, oh, but... Only when he's in the costume. Right. So in the early seasons, obviously, they just used um, footage from, like, Super Sentai from Japan and just got the actors to dub it over. But the guy who did Tommy Oliver always just put on this really, like, this distinct thing, like, tinge to his voice that made it sound a bit more heroic. And just, I love the fact he's like, yeah! Like, they could never replace that. If they ever remade Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and they tried to dub over the, yeah! I'd be like, no, fuck you. Nah. Get out. That's not my Tommy Oliver, that's not my White Ranger. I think another one we have to mention is the legendary James Earl Jones. They, all, like, they always bring him out of his coffin to do like Darth Vader. But is it you who was telling me they've brought him back to do the voice of Mufasa in the new fucking film? I'll, I'll have to double check this, but I'm pretty sure he is the only the one. The only actor who got to come back. And didn't you say someone was pissed off yeah, about Yeah, I it, think so? Nathan Lane expressed in an interview, he was like, in a jokey way, oh, I can't believe they brought him back and not me. This just goes to prove the old show business adage, everyone is replaceable except James Earl Jones. Hakuna Matata. 